When talking about hierarchies in the animal kingdom, Jordan Peterson says that the leader of the pack has to be benevolent, cooperative and sharing. Otherwise, two or three weaker guys could band up and overthrow him in a rather unpleasant manner. Unless that tyrant leader enjoys the protection of the caped crusader himself. As always, this video assumes that you have seen the new Batman movie and don't mind spoilers. Remember also that this is not a full review of this extremely rich and dense in symbolism movie, but a short video essay focusing on a single aspect of the plot. In the age of free sex and Tinder, certain asymmetries in the male-female dynamics have led to the creation of a vast group of people described by the term incels. However, though the name relates to the matrimonial market, we can observe how quickly it is inflating to mean people that are more generally impotent, that is, powerless. In economics, there's a long tradition of calling them have-nots. In symbolic terms, this powerlessness means lack of participation in the hierarchy, being pushed away to the margins and beyond. If a hierarchy does it on a massive scale, it signifies it is not a stable metaspace crowned with time that would allow for the flow of fresh water in the system in bearable amounts, but rather that it is a tyranny of excessive space cementing its boundaries, not letting anything disrupt the order in any way, but risking a total collapse known as the Flood, which the movie decides to present quite literally. In the Batman Universum, the Dark Knight is an idea, a force, coming from the shadow, the hidden, the chaotic. He is the Sabbath, the Jubilee, the power to update and actualize Gotham, known for its corrupt hierarchy of the Mafia, police and politicians. In other words, Batman, like a higher power, keeps the corrupt in check, so that they know they cannot unleash their tyrannical drives fully, lest they will fall prey to the shadow. This is the fear that Batman is talking about in the beginning of the movie. It's not unlike the fear of God, characteristic to benevolent kings that understand the answer to a power higher than themselves. The role of the Joker is quite consistent across the movies he's appeared in. It is to expose Gotham as a completely corrupt hierarchy, where everyone participates in the evil system and, much like Sodom and Gomorrah, it deserves nothing but annihilation. The Riddler, however, appears to be rather inconsistent in his motivations. We cannot tell if he sees Gotham as a good city, usurped by tyrannical power, or rather a being corrupt to the bone of its every single constituent and beyond redemption. The first two thirds of the movie point us more towards the former view, making the Riddler look more similar to Batman in being the corrective element, the crown of time, to the stable hierarchy, while the final act turns him into a full-fledged clone of the Joker. What is the point of teaching a lesson of freeing Gotham from the most corrupt if you are going to flood the whole city anyway, as it is beyond repair? Hard to tell. If we go back to Batman himself, we can also see a certain irregularity in his attitude. Classically, the role of Batman is obviously that of Christ, to take in the corruption of Gotham and devour it, stop it within himself, transform it into righteousness, and in this way, keeping said corruption at bay. In this movie, we quickly learn that he obviously hadn't been doing a great job about it, since a figure like the Riddler had to appear and, and deal with corruption his own way. We can assume that this is because Batman had been operating for mere two years so far. But as the plot progresses, we find out quite curiously that this iteration of the Caped Crusader is not really fighting with the corruption of Gotham, but rather 
focuses on dealing with the threat to this corrupted hierarchy. Whenever he gets to the high figures in the Mafia, it's either to collect information, as it is the case with the Penguin, basically caught red-handed, committing a major crime, or to protect them from death, as it is in the case of Falcone. The movie quite straightforwardly puts the Riddler as the main villain we should focus our attention on. The other guys are surely bad too, but not as bad as the criminal taking out the scum one by one. Many reviewers say it's the darkest Batman so far, which may be true in terms of color grading, but it is certainly not a Batman that strikes fear in the hearts of the rulers of Gotham. Rather, judging from the scene where he's holding a torch and leading people into the light, and then staying and helping with the rescue operations, we may think that he is transforming more into a white knight, a regular Superman-style hero archetype, the defender of the not-so-corrupt-after-all hierarchy. Time to put on your conspiracy theory glasses on, as I'm going to speculate heavily now. The seemingly powerless, insult type of people have been messing with the Hollywood business for a few good years now, pointing to the ideological and moral corruption of it. It is slowly turning out that those incels are not so impotent after all, and just like a tyrant chimpanzee at the top has to fear a rebellion of those below, so do the Hollywood elites started to fear the riddlers of the social media. And this is what they try to convey to us in this movie. Look, everyone likes Batman. As with every story, Imitate him. Be like him. Sure, we are bad and a bit corrupt, partying with Epstein on his island and pushing all kinds of agendas on you. But hey, Batman is on our side. Because the real evil is that incel over there. He seems to be attacking us for our corruption. But what he really aims for is annihilating you all flooding our whole world with the savage from outside of the walls. Planting such an idea and diverting the focus from themselves to the impotent is the only explanation that, that comes to my mind for the sudden switch in the Riddler's actions in this movie. Please prove me wrong and highlight what I've missed in the comment section below.